Okay. So what we are seeing, what we are observing is that if we now take this body, right? It's in some configuration here. It's a current configuration. Whether we look at it in this basis or in that basis, okay? The position vector, right, of any point here changes as we have written in that last line on the slide, okay? Whether we take this basis, the original basis, or the barred basis, right? The relation between the position vectors in these two bases, right, is as we've written out here, right? In general, it's given as C plus QX, right, where C is a vector and Q belongs to SO3, right? Now, that final form should look very familiar to us because remember when we talked about rigid motions, when we talked about rigid motions involving a translation and a rotation, right, we had exactly this form, right? Okay, so recall, recall that rigid body motions are of the form C function of time maybe plus Q also a function of time X. Okay? When we studied rigid motion, this is exactly what we did. Except back there, instead of X, little X, we had capital X because we were thinking of rigid motion starting from the reference configuration. What we are seeing now is that the idea, supposing we have the body in its current configuration, what we are seeing that when we talk about change of bases from this one to that one, okay, the change in the position vector of the spatial configuration is completely equivalent to just sitting in the original basis, not changing the basis, but taking the current configuration of the body and giving it a further rigid motion. All right? You see that? We just demonstrated that mathematically. Okay? So, let me state that. So, um, if x equals phi of x comma t is the current configuration, uh, current configuration, let me be even more specific, if, if, if x equals phi of x comma t is the current configuration placement of a material point right so the point that began at capital X is now at little x equals phi okay uh, comma then uh, x plus which I'm going to now write as C, maybe it's a function of time, plus Q, function of time, X is a rigid body motion on the current configuration. Furthermore, by the development we just carried out in the last few minutes, we've demonstrated that this rigid body motion on the current configuration is completely equivalent physically and mathematically to change in bases, right? This is equivalent to a change in basis 
which is given by E i bar equals Q transpose E i. Okay. Essentially, what we are saying is that look, you you hold the body. Now let's forget about let's let's uh, okay. Let's include the translation. You have the body in the current configuration. If you translate the basis and rotate it, okay, it is completely equivalent to keeping the same basis but going the other way with the translation and the rotation. Okay, that explains the appearance of Q transpose in the in the in the in the, in the transformation of bases, but Q in the rigid body motion. Okay. So, doing this is completely equivalent to doing this, okay, mathematically and physically. Okay, um, first of all, okay, so it's important to understand that, all right. Um, what we've also shown here is that when we change the basis in this fashion, essentially what we've shown is that uh, therefore the components of a vector u i okay, in basis e i transform as u i uh, plus shall we say equals q i j u i okay under the change in basis okay we were writing u i bar earlier but I'm, I'm just using u i plus now instead of u i bar okay let me just write it here Right. Instead of, I was using UI. I was using barred for the for components in the new basis. I'm just using plus now for components in the new basis, because this is what we're going to follow when we're thinking of it for as, as rigid motions, right? When we're thinking of the of of the equivalence of rigid motions to um, change in basis, I'm I'm just using pluses for the for 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 components after the rigid motion has been applied to the current configuration. Okay. Just 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 a change in in, in notation. That's all. Not, nothing nothing more than that. Okay. All right. All right. What about uh, tensors? Okay. How do tensors transform? Same thing, right? Think of this. Let's suppose we have a tensor sigma, right? In the original basis, it is sigma i j e i tensor Ej. Okay? Right? So, I'm now going to do a change in bases. I have sigma Ij. Uh, Ei we know is Q Ei bar. Okay? Um, that's fine. Okay? Tensor. Okay. In order to be consistent now with everything, uh, let me also call this E i plus, right? So what we are saying now is E i plus equals Q E i Q transpose E i. Okay. We've gone away from bar from the basis. E i to instead of using having the basis E i transformed E i bar, we're now saying the basis E i transforms E i plus. Okay, just to be consistent with this plus notation. That's all. Okay, so for uh, for E j now we have um, Q E j plus. Okay, now taking the same approach that we had before, I'm going to write this as Q K i E i plus tensor Q L j E j plus. Okay, using commutativity of everything, this is I'm going to write this as Q K i 
sigma i j uh, right q l j right all of this e i plus tensor e j plus okay but then just by observation we know that these are what those are the indices those are the components of our same tensor right the tensor is invariant right sorry to wag my finger but but the tensor is invariant uh, what we have here are um, let me see wait a minute I think I uh, right okay back here I needed to have L I I needed to have Q K I E K plus and Q and Q L J E L plus okay and then when I come down here I need to have likewise okay so with those corrections um, what we see now is properly what I've uh, drawn a brace on is uh, what we would call the sigma plus component in the new basis right so we see then that uh, the transformation for the components is the following sigma plus is Q K I sigma i j where by sigma i j we mean the components of the tensor in the original basis uh, q l j all right okay all right now having demonstrated this what we can also write is this collection of components right in matrix vector form right what this implies is that now remembering that sigma plus written in that form is the matrix of components in the new basis we see that it is obtained by Q acting on the matrix of components in the original basis Q transpose okay so that's how tensors transform okay and likewise we can also say that U i equals Q J i U, so ui plus equals qji ui implies that the vector of components transforms as u plus equals q u okay all right if this much is clear one question what happens with scalars under a change in basis or alternately under a change in current configuration so you have some scalar here right think of the mass density this is the current configuration we have one basis we go to another basis what happens to the mass density alternately we have this we translate the body and rotate it the other way completely equivalent what happens to the mass density which is a scalar scalars do not transform right or the transformation is the identity okay so scalars right so if we say rho of x comma t right equals rho plus of x plus comma t right you apply a rigid motion scalars don't change the mass density doesn't change if you have the temperature it doesn't change okay it's only vectors and tensors that need to transform their components need to be written differently okay so we'll stop here for this segment